What is going on, Paisanos? Mm. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> What's going on, Paisanos? V here. On today's Market Watch, we got a little bit of cards to talk about. You see, the banners came out late last night, and wow, oh wow, is the market going crazy. Everybody's moving up in value. Everybody's just... Just just spiking at a, at a place. We t we got hypes over here. We got actual price values and adjustments over here. The balance did a lot of weird things for the market. One of the things the balance did was not really hit anything, but hit something, which meant nothing, <laughs> and unlock a lot of everything. If I, if I had to sum balance up to somebody, that's how I'll sum it up to anybody. If someone answered me get V twenty uh, forty eight hours ago. How would you describe the balance unlocks? I would say something's got. Nothing. <laughs> it's a really weird situation. But what not weird is the fact that the market is moving fast in price points. This might be a bit of a market watch. Uh, first card we're talking about is Cyberstein. Cyberstein going to one. Now I do not think Cyberstein will actually see any meta play. But let's look over here. We got the Shonjo Ultra Rare and the regular rare from Dark Beginning 2. That's the only version of Cyberstein that's currently out right now. Market new market price is holding roughly around $21, but it's a little bit higher still. Looking at lightly played Mar uh, Cyberstein, it's $28. And if you want to talk about first edition, I'm not even sure if there's any in the market. Once again, this is within 12 hours of us getting the new... No, okay, so it's $28. This is within 12 hours, less than 12 hours of us getting the new ban list. Uh, but yeah, it's about $28 for Cyberstein, which came out in Dark Beginning 2. This is a rare. That's $28. Once again, I don't think this card would see any play. I think that card's like Effect Veil or... Uh, uh, Infinite Primates, which shut this card down, and if you have a deck based around this, well, unless you're playing casual Yu-Gi-Oh, it's probably not going to work out so well. Our next, Brilliant Fusion. This card went to 1 in our ban list. Looking at the Ultimate Rare Brilliant Fusions, it's a little bit under its current market price. Obviously, it's going to tank a lot lower. It's going to hit up roughly around, I'm going to say $20 is a subtle price. It might even go lower than that. We can easily see this card hitting around $10. Uh, looking at the Secret of Rares and as well as Super Rare Brilliant Fusions, these were hitting $10 yesterday. Look at it right now in the market, it's around $8 uh, for the Super Rare from Clash of Rebellions. Megaton's around $8, as well as the Secret Rare, which is actually around $7. The, these all versions are going to be taken in value. Wouldn't be surprised if you actually still are seeing these in your Dollar Binder special. Up next, guys, Topologic Gumblar Dragon was finally banned. I said it before, and I'll say it again. This card was Delinquent Duel that you could do on your turn. And then when you special a monster on your opponent's turn, you get to do Delinquent Duo again. The card. Oh, but it's a 3k beat stick that also has that ability. Look at the type of logic Gumlaw Dragon, seeing the fact that it got banned, is no surprise to a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players. Market price of this card is about $7. I feel like this card was hitting 9 at one point. Look at it right now, it's around $5 for Top of Logic Gumlaw Dragon. It'll probably hover around the $4 price point. It's still an iconic kind of card, and I think that it's not coming back in a long time. All the guys, Multi Faker jumped in value. With an $8 market price, we're seeing this card roughly around uh, $10 for All the guys, Multi Faker. A price point which is, in my opinion, probably gonna go down lower in value. Not that I'm saying All the guys is not the best deck in the world because it is the best deck. Uh, but looking at All the guys, it's just really weird to see it actually move up any higher in value because every All the guys player that I know, besides myself, and I know a good amount of All the guys players, they just held it. I mean, Multi Faker wasn't really worth m much money before. Now that the fact that all the guys skipped the ban list, we see it going higher in value. And that's what's going to happen a lot. Of, it's, you see an ongoing trend with a lot of decks like this. Uh, do I think all the guys still has a lot of play? Oh yeah, it's still going to see a ton of play in this meta. And the, once again, it's, 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 it's the cool thing about this meta. It's old meta versus new meta. It's just slowly becoming more old meta with new meta currently coming out. And... and and being released by Konami. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what happens. Uh, moving forward, guys, enter out the Kaiju Slumber. Spiked out of control. The Brick is a Shadow version. Market price is gonna be $7.45. Yeah, unlimited eight, and it's about $10 for the first edition. Uh, interrupted Kaiju Slumber. This card's at three, and I think Konami did this on purpose to promote the new Kaiju monster. Also, Kaijus are pretty good. <laughs> Not sure if you heard heard about that, but um, they do a lot of cool things. And I, I believe making interrupted Kaiju Slumber go to three allows more decks to play. Kaijus and more decks can play Kaijus. Well, decks like Pendulum Magicians kind of little have a bit of a hard time. Interrupt the Kaiju Summer used to be a dollar binder special. I should know. I had about four of these in my dollar binder, which I got to go into my store and grab before the pre-release. It's a good card, and I feel like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players are not going to start grabbing it in general. Is it worth ten dollars? Debatable. Not really debatable. It's not worth ten dollars, but it's still a good card. And I feel like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players are going to be trying to abuse this card yet again. 
Um, next guy's fairy tale snow was banned. You mean the card that's Book of Moon that is repeatable? Book of Moon got banned, and I can use it on my opponent's turn to Book of Moon their monsters. That card, yes. Random guy who's asking a lot of setup questions. Yes, fairy tale snow deserved to be banned. Uh, look at the version of Limited Light he played about six and a half. It's under his price point yesterday. By the way, the market price was around seven. The market price now is currently going under seven uh, to catch up with Fairytale Snow. Look at Common Fairytale Snow, the dollar fifty. I mean, all these versions are useless. This card is too strong. The fact that this card is even out in the meta to begin with, and being at three where it was before it got banned, is insane. And seeing Fairytale Snow go under six. It wouldn't be surprising to see it go on to like a dollar, two dollars, to be honest. Dollar buying special coming up, boys. Up next, the biggest announcement, El Shadow Contra coming off the ban list. Now, looking at the Dose Alliance Ultra Rare, it's about $16. Market price showing to be about $14. Looking at the Mega 10, market price showing to be about $16. It's actually $13. Um, there's a bunch of people listing their cards, uh, their show constructs, and that's where the price is going low. The ulti? The, oh, this one? This card over here? When I first started doing market watches, ulti should all constructs were eight dollars. In fact, you could go back to, way back to my when I beginning market watches, where I vehemently tell everybody to buy at least one ulti should all construct. I actually specifically say that in multiple videos when I first started doing these market watch videos because I believed in this card. I love you, should all construct. Okay, don't don't make it weird, guys. Listen, market price is about thirty one dollars. Price not showing stabilization. It's not unlimited. Uh, unlimited like you play should all constructs are about uh, thirty nine. Uh, near mint versions, the next one is forty dollars. For first edition ulti El Shadow Construct, we're talking forty-five dollars for this card. Now here's the weird thing about this. Someone I did a live stream last night and someone commented in this. Can Shadow see metal play? Well at first I was a little bit hesitant. I said no, I don't think it can see metal play. But thinking about it, why can't Shadows in general be combined with Thunder Dragons? That would be really interesting and would make a deck that's really good. In my opinion, just that much more better. But you guys let me know what you, what you think in the comments section below. Go down and comment about this. Comment about the cards you previously, previously saw. Also, since you're down there already, hit the subscribe button, the like button, the notification bell, and let's get on to the next card. Sure, it. So, Teachers of Necros came off the banners as well, went to one. Uh, price did jump for price trends. Market price is about 46 cents. It's still about 50 cents for sure. I believe sure it's a lot easier to get because in the Secret Forces, everyone pulled this card left and right and left and right. So I don't think it's going to be hard for you to get a shirt Necro, a strat, Strategic of the Necros. And I'll talk about Necros in a second um, as we look into Necros of Brionic, a card which yesterday, after the ban has happened, hit almost around $200. Stabilized around $150 yesterday, uh, last night. Price is showing increasing in value. Market price showing this card to be about $20. On limits, about $56. First edition, you say? Don't worry about it. It's only 60 bucks. 60 bucks for a Necros of Bionic. Let me explain it like this. Sure, coming off the balance is good. I think Necros is a pretty fun deck, but it's not nowhere near meta relevant. And I feel like the whole market adjusted the minute they realized this. The minute they saw this, they're like, you know what? This ain't worth it. And started listening to Necros of Bionics. Smart move, market. I ain't gonna lie. The thing is, anyone who's holding Necros right now, I think it's it's been late for you guys. I'm not sure if you got anyone sold their Necros uh, Bionic last night, but the market uh, uh, with Necros of Bionic is gonna go lower and lower and lower and lower. And not because the deck's bad or the card's bad, it's because the deck's not fully unlocked, and we're getting a reprint in the April reprint set. Power, Duelist, Duelist Power. Anyway, we're getting a reprint of Necros. So a lot of you good players that don't currently have Necros is going to have access to Necros. Granted, it's Ultra Necros, not Secret Rare, which is gorgeous, but it's still going to impact the price point of Necros of Bionica and other Necros cards. And the reason why is because everyone's going to be opening those packs to try to pull, pull an Infinite Impermanence. Probably the biggest chase of card in that set, and arguably of the year so far. So, looking at Necros Bionic, even though it's a great card, and even though Necros are good, everyone's going to be cracking these and pulling these to the side, looking for infinite permanence. And that's going to drive this card's price down. Up next, guys, Insector Hornet was another big one. Insector Hornet, fully unlocked. Now, someone commented and said, hey, V, Insector Hornet's unlocked. Obviously, I missed the, the opportunity to go in on this card. What else you got for me? Well, we miss, we're still missing Insector Dragonfly. I feel like Konami's ultimately going to unlock Insector Dragonfly when they realize this Hornet's going to do nothing in the meta. I'm going to be honest with you. Looking at Insector Hornet, I would not go for it anymore because it's already out at 3. It might go up a little more in value, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it does go up more in value. In fact, I'm gambling on that as I'm going to be holding my extra copies of Insector Hornet, waiting for Konami to come out and unlock more cards like Dragonfly and, you know, stuff like that. And just, 
Dragonfly, really. Uh, but look at it, it's not the Hornet. Obviously, it's not the card you want to buy. It will go up in value, but you're going to be spending six for unlimited uh, version of this one. You're going to look at other cards, like Gigamantis or Ultimate Rare. It came out order of Chaos. It's about four bucks. Insectosaurus at Caliber, unlimited. It's about four bucks. Came out in order of Chaos. Galactic Overlord, uh, sure, and Ulti, Insecto Exosad. Only Ulti. Do not go for um, uh, regular Ultras. We're not. We're done with that. Unlimited limit's about three. Exabito's a secret rare. Only came out in order of Chaos. No other printings. It's holding three. Dollars. These are the ones I would focus on if I was you guys. Obviously, if you have a little bit of extra money, you want to invest big and gamble, basically, you can go in and inject the Hornet, but I would wait because it's going to go back down in value because it's not going to see as much play. Mark by showing this card, I have $5 and looking on limit near mid. It's about six. First edition, six. <laughs> so that's what I say about, feel about inject the Hornet. It's a good card, but I feel like unless your Dragonfly is fully unlocked, this card cannot reach its full potential and its value will not increase as much. Moving forward, uh, to, to combat insectors, evidently, uh, Kakuna Ultra Evolution is going higher value. This card was like 6 to $8, and I was very hesitant on buying this. Now it's $16. It's insane. A uh, market price showing this card to be around $11, and you can see it over here is about $16. After this one sold, it's going to near $17 for Kakuna Ultra Evolution. It's a phenomenal card. I think a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players realize this, um, just waiting for insectors to do, do things. I think this card's going to go higher in value, but it's going to tank first. The reason why, once again, like I said previously, insectors are going to go down in value. They're not going to see much metal play. The prices are going to be dropped for Kakuna Ultra Evolution. And then we got, we got between now and the next balance, maybe the balance after, to look at insectors and when we get Dragonfly at 3. That's the main card. Hornet was only a piece of the main card, which is Dragonfly. Monarch Stormforth is going up in value. Look at that Monarch Stormforth. Uh, the most expensive version is Legend Collection Kai, but it's 20 cents. Infinite Ghost worth nothing, and you know what? It shouldn't be worth nothing. Anyone playing with this one is an idiot. Uh, Commons is amazing compared to Infinite Gold. It's about 10 cents. I heard that this version was getting bought out, but I'm looking at it right now and see it. There's a, dark, a bunch of Dark Savior Super Rares, which is really nice. The highest rarity version of Monarch Stormforth is Ultra Rare. The card's at 3. So. There's another deck called Two Dracos. I'm not sure if anyone heard of it. It's been a while, Two Dracos. But they got a little bit better <laughs> with this card at three, being the fact that this this deck can easily uh, use your opponent's monsters with Monarch Stormforth, tribute their spells and traps if they have to, and just have that kind of reliability. And, and also, Two Dracos kind of are budget right now. They're not going to remain budget. And I guarantee you, in the next market watch I'll have, we'll have some crazy prices for Two Dracos because you have three Monarch Stormforth. The biggest deck to stop you, Thunder Dragons with Colossus and all that jazz. Yeah, you just tribute their Colossus and you're in a good spot. Um, next, Vanny Fiend. Once again, guys, Monarch Stormforth allows decks to play Vanny Fiend for free now. So, if you have a really spammy special summon deck, you kind of got to worry about Monarch Stormforth resolving, and then them rambling and going, here's Vanny Fiend. Answer this card or die. That's literally what the card says. Looking at Vanny Fiend, the ultimate rare is really expensive. I won't go into it because it's crazy. But, Vanny Fiend, OTS 1 pack 1, is 15 and a half. It's under its six, $16 and $17 market price. I would recommend you picking this one up if you can. If not, don't worry about it. You got the champion pack rares, but th there's an ultra rare somewhere. Yeah, there's an ultra rare. That's a dollar for, for this card. So, if you don't want a super high ma max rarity, but you still want to have decent rarity, for $1, you can buy a Vanity Fiend. I recommend, recommend picking up three. Also, Vanity Fiend Brother, Majesty Fiend, which doesn't get much play as Vanity Fiend. Uh, look at a Majesty Fiend, Majesty Fiend. It's 50 cents for the 10 one. Came out in 2015. After that, you have the original print from Primal Origins. Really gorgeous looking card. Um, Monster Effects cannot be activated. It's pretty strong. Uh, looking at the card's price, is about seven dollars. Uh, Unlimited Lightning Played is about six to seven dollars, and uh, first editions are going to be running you um, about eight bucks for Majesty Fiend. Secret Rare. This card was like four bucks forever. The only reason I know that is because I went to a Yu-Gi-Oh event and one of my subscribers asked me to sign a Magic Fiend and it got to me and I felt terrible. So I sent him a playset. And I remember it was like three or four bucks each one I sent to the guy. And the guy was really happy and I'm like, it's nothing. It's no, seriously, it didn't cost nothing for this card. And the thing about that is it's really went up in value. So hi guy. You saw that damage one? Anyway, uh, <laughs> Infinity Barrier Secret Rare from Shining Darkness is roughly around six thousand the market price. Let's see where it really is though. Um, it's actually roughly around ten dollars on the market price. And after that one's gone, you're gonna be hitting some crazy numbers like thirteen, uh, unlimited near mint fifteen, and these are the only ones that are like near uh, lightly played. First edition lightly played to roughly around sixteen dollars. The weird thing about this is when the mark when the banners came out yesterday, we found one Infinity Barrier for a dollar fifty. Someone quickly scooped that up though because. Dollar fifty for a fifteen dollar card, deal me in, boys. Up um, next, Chaos Emperor Dragon. Now, don't be surprised the fact that we we're looking at Dark Revelation two Chaos Emperor Dragon. That's not the money one. I've always said it. I said it yesterday in my live stream, and, I, and I'm gonna say it today. It's really hard to get Dark Revelation two. I'll give you that, but it's very hard to also get a Chaos Emperor Dragon 
Ultimate Rare, which is the number one expensive one in my opinion. Market price is going to be about $34, $35 roughly. Unlimited 8 plays about $40. And as far as finding a first edition that's not damaged, that's going to be a little bit of time. First edition, um, Lightly Play, it's about $85 for a Chaos Emperor Dragon. It's the hype. I'm not sure Chaos Emperor Dragon would see play with the new Errata. I really don't know. But what I do know is this is a hype price. And I don't know if I was you. I always sell into the hype. If I had, I got to find my ulti somewhere. I would sell into this. Also, Invasion of Chaos, Camp Chaos Emperor Dragon is gorgeous. Looking at its price point, about $34. And we see it over here for... Uh, page. Don't, oh, there's Unlimited Lady Play for $30. Bucks. Uh, after that, they got Unlimited Name Rent for $35. Um, as far as First Edition, Chaos Emperor Dragon... Damn. That's going to be a minute. Hold on a second. Little side note about Chaos Emperor Dragon. I have a Chaos Emperor Dragon that's so clean. So First, uh, first Edition Name Mint, by the way. Double Sleep. Um... It, it's people think it's fake. I, I think I'm gonna show it in a video uh, coming up soon. But first, the light you play is seventy dollars. After that, it quickly goes to the eighty dollar price point. We're hitting eighty two, uh, eighty four, and ultimately eighty six. Listen, Kingdom of Dragon Secret Rare is obviously the best rarity. It kind of reminds me of like the BLS. How BLS moved this way. If BLS got an ulti, I think I think it would be BLS ulti and either Invasion of Chaos or or, or uh, IOC or Dark Relations. I'm more of an original print guy, IOC First Edition. Just like Cast Emperor Dragon over here, being IOC First Edition, has a crazy amount of value. I think the same thing would be a less. Um, uh, no, no, that. <laughs> um, next, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. Being the fact that Sky Strikers did not get hit at all on this ban list, at all, and Thunder Dragons took an Invert hit with Goat Shark going to one, and Brilliant Fusion going to one. Once again, Invert hit, not the deck got hit, but the cards the deck kind of uses, those cards, those got hit. Uh, Sky Strikers didn't at all. And this could make Sky Strikers the tier 1 deck, the dominant tier 1 deck between Sky Strikers and Thunder Dragons. Be especially since Sky Strikers have now the card that if they're in the main phase, they can just gain life points on you. It's a great resource that Sky Strikers can utilize. Uh, look at Sky Strikers Mobilize Engage. $44 on the market price. This card was nowhere near that yesterday. Um, first in the admits are roughly around $59. This card surpassed its $55 price point, where it was when it, we had the last e ban list when it didn't get hit. It was roughly around $55. The card price is roughly around $59 uh, to about $60 for engages. I would, If you're going to locals today and you're doing your sneak, I would put this card at $60 all day long. Sky Shaker Widow Anchor, another card that was about $35 last time. And look at the market price showing it to be about $26. Wrong go. <laughs> It's about 35 actually after the unlimited sales for 35 it goes into $40 after those 40s It's gonna hit a little bit higher once these are all gone. It can hit $73 for a widow anchor. What? What where are we living in? What universe are we in that widow anchor can be higher than engage? <laughs> That's insane uh, Moving forward guys, obviously the OTS format pack 9 sky sugar a Shizuku Zuku, a jump up in value. Mark price going to be about thirty-three dollars, and it's nowhere near that. Um, it actually was going under thirty dollars yesterday. I think it was like thirty-one. It was tanking. Look at its current price point right now. It's about forty-six dollars. After that one's gone, it's hitting about forty-eight. Page bomb out with this card going about sixty. And there's nothing real wall-wise besides a playset over at fifty-two dollars. Sky Striker Shizuku is definitely making moves in the market, and I predict this card to go higher in value if Strikers show more prevalence, which, let's be honest, they're probably going to. Looking at uh, Sky Striker Ace Kagari, which is around $22, $23 in the market, the market price is going to be about $24, $25, I'm sorry, $25, $45. Uh, Unlimited Light plays about $31. After that, Near Mint's going to hit about roughly $33. And yeah, that's where it stays. Price is bottom up thirty around thirty seven. Kagari has been around for a while. OTS Swan Pack eight is just it's good, but everyone had to crack at it, and I feel like every scratch like a player has a playset or can easily access a playset. Um next, Brianna Dragon the Ice Barrier. Starting to go down a little bit in value. Had a bit of a price jump. Market price on this card be about $20 in the market price, but it's roughly around $30. It's still going down slowly. Listen, Brianna's a great card, and I think that it still has viability within the meta. But note the $30 viability. It's going to start going down. We're going to see an actual settle price. I, I'm probably thinking about $20, $25, but not nowhere near $30, bucks, unless everyone starts playing it. Number 75, Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. Cards on market price about $31. Looking at it, first didn't let you play. It's actually about $30. First edition you admit is also about $30 to $31. The thing about this card is it's still gonna see metal play. Konami didn't hit this card, which means number 75 will actually still show viability within the meta. And we're gonna see what happens with this. It's gonna be very interesting to see. I think it I think it has a lot of promise. <sighs> Just like Instant Fusion. I always say this card's gonna get banned because this card should get banned because it was in every meta deck since, I don't know, Zodiac, guaranteed 100%. Look at Instant Fusion though. 
it might be going higher than what it currently is at. Market price on this card would be about $51. Unlimited, uh, or this unlimited near mint is about $50. And that's where it is roughly around $50. The Ultra from Mega Packs went down a little bit, but I think that's still because of hype and fluctuation of the balance uh, expectation to come out soon. I think we're going to see all these versions go up in value. Look at all versions of Instafusion, though. They're all kind of money. Even the commons are like two to three to four dollars for common instant fusions. This card's crazy in its market price. Uh, look at C Monster Theseus, the strongest monster of 2017. It wasn't. Um, look at this. I think this card actually might show some viability. It might go up in value now, being the fact that instant fusions at three. This card might actually help with help with combo. So keep an eye out for this card. Wouldn't be surprised. You better get your at least one copy for yourself. You can easily R09 this card. It's been dirt forever as far as price valuations. Top of Logic is Bay, nine dollar market price. Price range showing this card to be about nine fifty to almost save ten dollars for a Top of Logic is Bay. Here we can see a first edition mint roughly from ten dollars. Listen, I think this is a phenomenal card. Everyone needs to own at least one copy of this card. The the meta where I feel like we're gonna be going to with Salomon Greats, uh, 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 um Orcus. Uh, 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 Paleo, all these kind of back row heavy decks are gonna show my dominance and cards that answer those back row heavy decks. Well, that's gonna or decks that, like like two, two Dracos, which doesn't really have too big of a problem with back row heavy decks, is, is gonna be the more viable options we're gonna be seeing. Back row is gonna be a huge factor moving into this format. With that said, top about Spain is a card you definitely want to have one of. Up next, guys, a little fun fact only came out Flames Destruction, money set. Um, up next, uh, Red, Re Red, Re Red Reboot also came out Flames Destruction. Market price on this card would be about $2.50. Yeah, limited near mint's about two and a half. First edition near mint's about $3 from a super rare. Hopefully, you guys, you have your play set of Red Reboot. It's a phenomenal card, and this is going to be the difference of winning and losing for a lot of Yu Gi Oh players. This format. If you're playing a deck that can take your opponent out in one turn, Red Reboot is a must-have card, non-negotiable. In fact, guaranteed 100% Thunder Dragon players start with their Colossus, their Trident, not, well, yeah, Trident, and three Red Reboot in the side. That's how you build a deck. You, everything else is negotiable. Red Reboot, it's a must. You're planning against all these back row heavy decks. You're going to need Red Reboot to lock your opponent's back row down so you can end the game quickly. And that's why it's called important. You need three. Same with you, Striker players. Uh, up next, guys, we have Summon Sorceress, which, once again, did not get hit by the ban. It's really weird. I, I think if Konami wanted to preemptively hit Needle Fiber, they would have hit Summon Sorceress. But being the fact that they did, didn't hit Needle Fiber or bring Needle Fiber out, I believe they didn't want to bring Summon Sorceress to any kind of limitation on the ban list. Look at its current price point. It's around 11 bucks, actually. Not that expensive. Uh, looking at Soul Fusion version, is about $1.45. So, yeah, Big Bay. But still, I mean, even Super Rare. I have both. I kind of like the Super Rare as well, to be honest with you. Uh, up next, Scapegoat, getting limited to one. Retro Pack Scapegoat, get wrecked. <laughs> See you in Go for my boys. Um, then we got Ultimate to Rare Scapegoat, which is for the more, always been $21. My question is going to be having about $25, but it's always been $21. Really didn't change in the market price. So I think I think Goat Format might have gotten a boost from this um, this limitation because Scapegoats might see metal play. I, I think they can still. I mean, that's still a pretty good card, um, depending how you you know work around it. But Goat for our players are like, oh, we'll just put this on our Goat decks. It's ultimate rare. It's gorgeous. Uh, up next, guys, Link Karibo. Market price should be about 26. It's actually about 27. Going to be hitting 28. And uh, even the comments are roughly around the $5 price points. More or less, th these versions are going to put in value because everyone's getting pot of extravagance, and you need multiple of these. Also, common Link Karibos, still not bad. Just not as good as the... Pre if you're like, you have, I feel like if you have three pot of extravagance, uh, a debut week of the release of, of Savage Strike, yeah, you have money to buy Link Reboot, but don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> um, next, guys, Eradicated Epidemic Virus. This card's price point is around $22, and yeah, sold out. <laughs> uh, unlimited near mints is roughly around $39. After that, it's about $60 bucks for Eradicated Epidemic Virus. Now, if you guys are out there and you're really bummed about not getting this, don't worry about it. It came out Ultra Rare and Legendary Collection Kyber. You forgot about it? He's big silly. $0.18. Cents. It's not bad. Not as good as a Secret Rare, which I have only one of, which I really wish I got more. But the Ultra Rares aren't bad as well. Dual Genesis Super Rare versions are about 10 cents, and you got a bunch of commons over here. So, everyone has access to this card, but the Secret Rares will get you more nerd points at your uh, Yu-Gi-Oh events. Um, moving forward, guys, Terraforming. So, I think it's time we realize that Terraforming is going to stay at 2. It should go to 1. It deserves to go to 1. I'm buying this card so Konami can hit it on the balance, because that's what normally what happens with me. Terraforming's current price is around $36. After that, it's around $42. 
Um, they got the other versions, which is about four bucks for the super rare. The secret rare is also roughly around four. I don't know which one's nicer. I like them both. They're both beautiful as far as the way they look. I, I Legendary Collection Kaiba secret rares are pretty nice. Super rares and old super rare, gorgeous. But yeah, looking at terraforming super uh, uh, ultimate rare. I, it's not my favorite ultimate rare. But it's an ulti, and I'm a rarity horse. I need to get one myself personally, and it's going up higher in value. Now, we're not seeing much with field spell decks currently, but um, like I said, two Dracos. Also, sub -teros. Um, Yeah, and Trickster's is going to be a thing. Um, basically, if you run a field spell, you need two of these ultimate rares, so that's 80 bucks down the drain. <laughs> Um, next guy's Max C. So Max C didn't get hit on the banlist at all. It didn't come off the banlist. It just did that one. I felt like this was a dumb move by Konami. I thought like Konami did a phenomenal banlist with one mistake, and that mistake is Max C. Looking at Max C from Storm of Ragnarok, it's about twenty-five dollars. Uh, Electric Collection Five D is about twelve. Uh, but the Ultimate Rare is the one I really focus on. Unlimited Mint, which is the Ultimate Rare's version, is about one hundred and twenty-eight dollars. And I feel like this is either going to stabilize or decline in price point. You see, any Yu-Gi-Oh player that wants Pot of Indulgence needs to sell cards. For the most part. I mean, then again, if you have ulti max C's, you might not because you have the money. But if you don't, what's an easy way to get good cards like Pot of Indulgence that you need a playset of? Oh, selling max C. It's a fast and quick way. And I think that's what's going to happen. By the way, I'm rushing this market watch to end a little bit because I have 20 minutes to get to my shop to run um, the pre-release. So, sorry about that, guys. Anyway, up next, Condemn Witch. Another phenomenal card that nobody's looking at, nobody's talking about. And what's over here at the meta? And Condemn Witch is hanging out here being value. Remember, guys, they changed the name of a card so this card couldn't get it. If the card was trash, why would Konami do that? Look at its price point, it's about $1.82. Unlimited, it's about $1.70. First edition is about 2 bucks. In fact, this card everywhere else is $2. I got a review coming up soon. I'm probably going to buy a bunch of these. I like this card. It's a $2 card. It's a phenomenal price card. Great artwork, by the way. I'm um, next, Anti-Spell Fragrance. Like another card that definitely True Draco's going to play. We see Subterra with Guru Control playing Anti-Spell Fragrance. And yeah, it's going to see a lot of play moving forward within the meta. The Pile of Chaos is a gorgeous version. It's Prismatic, which is my favorite rarity. Um, but it's also a pretty expensive for the, for what it is. Eight thousand in market price, eight sixty. And look at over here; it's about six bucks. It's a little bit under its current market price. If you want to snag it up real quickly, I personally have the DTs, which I got for a dollar forever ago. Um, market price going to be about six bucks, six and a half. Price is showing this version to go down in value. And yeah, it's about three dollars actually for for this version. Uh, there's sixteen of them at three bucks. So in case you guys want to get your DTs, I would recommend picking them up. It's three bucks, three and a half. You also got other versions, commons, rares, super rares, ultra rares. Um, these are easy to get versions. Just make sure to have a playset if you are looking to play Guru Control. Um, Pinpoint Land is on the card once again. Same thing with Condemn Witch. Everyone's over here. I'm over here. I'm in 2024. Market Watch already. Okay? They're already recorded. They're already done. Cybernetic Horizon Pinpoint Land is another great card. Market Watch for this card would be about a dollar. Unlimited Mint's 90 cents. First edition, you damn right, it's under a dollar. 97 cents. Phenomenal buy and definitely a card that I'm looking forward to get more of in the future. I just think it's a great card. I think it has great potential. Shadows are going higher in value. Who'd guess? Looking at Shadow Beast, it's about nine and a half to ten dollars for the super rare. Not many in the market. But here's the real kicker: the regular rare Shadows are dollar cards. So if you have regular rares in your in your wherever your collection, grab them, throw them in your binder. That's dollar card special. You value them bad boys at dollars all day long. That's good trade bait. Also, there can only be ones on the card that's going up in value. Market price is going to be about $275, almost near $3. And for the most part, after these are gone, it's going to be hitting near that $3 market price. There can only be one for the most part, does, for the most part, does not have a deck it definitely belongs in. We can argue about decks that can it belong in. We can argue about decks it has seen play in the past, and I'll agree with that. But as far as the template, a whole for one specific deck, there can only be one. Cannot find that one deck. Still a phenomenal card. For a low price to where it currently is right now, these couple of listings, I would highly recommend you pick a play setup. I think this card can have viability within the future. Um, then again, this card's a great reprint target. It came on a stream 4, so you do what you want to do with that kind of information. Definitely a good reprint target, but definitely a good card as well. Pot Extravagance is also $80. Pretty good money card. Uh, looking over here, Witcher Strike is rough, still around seventy dollars. Um, looking at Fantastic Dra Fantastical Dragon, it's about sixty dollars. Boros Savage is twenty six. Do not go for that value. It's jack crap. It's a ten dollar card. Trust me when I say this. This is a great card. Ten dollars good. Boros Load better for against other dragons. And uh, Boros Sword ends games. Savage is a phenomenal card. Only pendles can make it happen. Psychic Wheeler is went up in value, like I said, I was gonna do. It's forty bucks. That's it. $25 market price, not anymore. It's $40. It's going to go higher in value. The Kaiju card is still $17, and it might be a wanted card this uh, this past weekend. Keep an eye out for this card. TJ Triad Launcher is still trash. Banless or no Banless. Hyper Librarian going to 3 or not Hyper Librarian going to 3. It went to 3. Uh, this card's still absolutely trash. I think it's going to be going lower in value. 
live stage is gonna go lower in value it's going higher right now but i think in, in the overall scheme traditional live stage will be going lower in value and not because churches are bad i think churches are very good it's just that live stage it's a third field spell what are you doing um looking at danger okapoka it's still around 11 dollars i would value around 10 world legacy guard dragons is also around 15 bucks don't value this card at high at all it's gonna go lower in value uh, Cyber Giants Quantum is around 10. It says Cybers on it. It's probably going to maintain some value, but ultimately go lower as well. Um, look at this Ultra Rest. 10 bucks. God damn. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening as far as the market right now. So, Tomashiro Fusions, which was a 